Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosel, I'm Dave Giancola, and thanks for joining us again for The Road to Stardom. Well, amateur golfers these days are getting better and better, and it becomes more rare that the winner of the U.S. Women's Amateur or U.S. Amateur sticks around, stays amateur, to try and defend his or her title, never mind repeat as a winner. But Pepperdine University star Danielle Kang pulled off the feat in 2010 and 2011 before embarking on a pro career that already includes multiple victories. And she certainly had to earn it defeating Jessica Corda in the 2010 title match at Charlotte Country Club and Maury Jitanagarn in the 2011 title match at Rhode Island Country Club. Well, it was a who's who in both of those championships as Kang became the first player in 15 years to repeat as a U.S. Women's Amateur Champion. Enjoy her run to history. In this 110th U.S. Women's Amateur, Charlotte Country Club, nearly a hundred years old, a storied history. It is a great test. And this match, championship match, started early this morning. Both players have the first hole with birdies. Kang won the second. This now was Jessica Corda for a birdie at three to square the match. Uphill par three, uphill putt, beautifully hold. But Danielle Kang had an answer. This is the par five fourth, and this was a tremendous second shot. Reachable par five, and she comes in with a fairway wood, a laser-like fairway wood. <laughs> Knocks it to within about eight feet. She would two putt from there to go one up. She birdied three of the first four holes and was only one up. At the eighth, another terrific second at the par four. She had beautiful iron play today on with both her distance and direction. Jessica Corda, though, with a chance to take advantage of her length at the long par five, 574 yard 12th is her third. Hole located all the way in the back right corner. And she hits a stunning little short iron shot. But as she did all morning, Jessica, or Danielle King, excuse me, with an answer, this a long birdie putt up and over the ridge at 16. This was the longest birdie putt of the morning. Her fifth birdie. That would put her to two up, and that's where she would remain during the break between the morning and afternoon sessions. They teed off this afternoon at 1.30, and they have the first three holes. They came to the 22nd. Again, this par five, this was Corda for Eagle. Trying to cut the lead in half, she could not do it. Kang with an unbelievable up and down from above the hole. But this was Danielle Kang for a par at five. This after Corda missed a short birdie putt. And, and one of the few mistakes Kang has made today. So through 23 holes, we have a tremendous final match brewing. Danielle Kang with a one-up lead. And helps back with that putter. When you miss a short one and you've been putting well, you have to tell yourself that it was just an aberration. It was, it was a crazy, strange thing that happened and put it behind you. Taking a look at some of the statistics so far in this championship match. And Kay, I guess you can say ball striking uh, uh, at a premium. They're doing it uh, both so well. Both have hit almost all the fairways. Just a little bit of dis difference in Jessica and Danielle with the amount of greens that they've hit. And they've now each had a three putt. Now back down to the green, Jessica Corda for birdie to win the hole and square the match. And I talked to her, her father, Peter, who was catting for her this morning, said that they made a couple mistakes, missed a couple three-footers, four-footers that they shouldn't have. She lightened up on her grip a little bit, just trying to stand a little bit taller and let the putter head just swing. And that's what she's done beautifully all week. She also had a little tendency to aim slightly left and was missing a few putts to the left. Not a whole bunch of concessions this match, but maybe at this point of the proceedings, uh, each player wants to see their opponent hole out. You know, the one thing I noticed this morning when uh, Jessica was, or excuse me, this, for this afternoon match, she was putting on the practice putting green and did not make a putt. Now she probably putted 30 putts from mm -hmm. anywhere from 
10 to 15 feet and none of them went in. And I think you have to see the ball go in, get her confidence back. <gasps> oh my goodness. You called it, Donna. Donna, that, her, her shoulders are shut. Now they're shut. They were, a, they were a little bit open I, earlier. Maybe she's overdone it. Yeah, exactly. Oh boy. That is very, very hard to overcome when you start losing your confidence. And she's had such supreme confidence on these greens all week. Possible gift here for Kang, the short one for par to win the hole and go back to two up. Well, in contrast, Kang uh, had no adjustments in the lunchtime and just felt really confident with her whole game. Kang wins the hole with par through 24. She's two up. Well, Mark, uh, this is a key tee shot for Danielle. Her opponent is awfully long and could probably hit it in two, so she needs to do everything she can to get this in the fairway. Well, Vicky, four times today when Kang has lost a hole, she has gone on to win the next hole. That not a very good tee shot, though. Well, she has tremendous amount of confidence today. You can just see it in her. One adjustment they made on the uh, practice facility this morning was lightening up her grip. She felt like she may have been squeezing the club a little bit too tight, even though she hit the ball fairly well. She has such beautiful rhythm to her golf swing. And a little bit of smoke coming out of Jessica Corda's ears there. Not Danielle Kang right now, though. She has got a two-up lead. It's the championship match of the U.S. Women's Amateur. Hole location, that back left corner, 245 all the way to the hole. Both fathers caddying today. That was Peter Corda you heard there. They will be speaking in Czech most of the day as that ball comes up just short and left. A good spot, though. And Danielle's father and caddy also, they will be speaking. You know, it's interesting, Mark. Whenever uh, Danielle's in trouble is when she really talks to her father. The rest of the time, it's on automatic pilot. That's the most we have heard in terms of conversation. Hold it. That was a tremendous shot from there. Let's take another look at this swing. She Got her right shoulder low, which you need to do in this case. She has that lip to contend with, plus the ball's a little below her feet. It wasn't a completely level line. She just got it over. So Danielle Kang and Jessica Corda both laying just short of this green. The problem is Kang has taken one more stroke. The ground for the amateurs out there. And we just saw Jessica Corda do it tremendously on her shot. But Danielle Kang now, Vicky, in trouble here. Well, she has a very lengthy par putt here. It's going to move a little bit, not, not a huge amount from her right to left. Definitely needs to give this a go, though, with her opponent putting for birdie. I saw a big smile there out of her, and, and I think we, we've seen a little bit of a, a change in Danielle Kang in the last couple months, and that's thanks to her experience at the Women's Open this year playing Oakmont. She made the cut, had a rough weekend, and really realized that she had lost patience. She had, was frustrated with herself, and she decided Enough of that. I got to go out and enjoy this game. It's for a par. Hoping to retain her two up lead, which K just seems like such a bigger lead to me than one up. Now well, she just went for that one. She has been in control of this match all day, never been down. So that hole will be conceded. And now Jessica Corda just one down. Remember, she has never been ahead in this championship. You guys hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. 
Hey, uh -oh. yeah. Raindrops are falling on our head. You guys didn't know. Carlson okay, didn't bat an eye, so it can't be a problem. Oh, look at those cute little girls. Wow. You. Tension not quite as carefree. Well, that rain really coming down right now. And that's also going to add uh, a little bit of distance to the shots. Probably have to ha add about a half a club with this rain falling as it is. And this is where the caddy becomes really important. Hey, look at that. A little holder for the, uh, for the umbrella on top of the, um, the push cart. Okay, a lot going on here now. We've got an umbrella, towel, a, a cover to cover the bag, to keep the clubs dry. Well, this is the first time this week that the players have faced this. It rained last night very hard. About a quarter inch fell on the golf course, and that was the first rain that we'd had all week. And that was one of the things that uh, Jessica and her dad talking about, that they felt like the greens were just a shade slower in the morning because they're going to be slow in the morning anyway. Um, Jessica has just pulled out her rain glove, her black rain glove that will have a little more tackiness to it. Be able to withstand the, the wetness. Total 156. One, Beautiful setup and posture. That will come up just short also, so a big elevation change in the next putt for her. It's the U.S. Women's Amateur Championship. Championship of that ridge that could actually kick the ball in either direction almost. It, it does depend on her line. I mean, if she plays it too far out to the right, it's going to swing out, out there, and vice versa if she plays it too far left. I'd go right at it. <laughs> Uh, of course, always a little uncertainty, Kay, with the water on the greens now. Exactly. I was going to ask, Vicki, how, how you would adjust for this new moisture on the green from this distance. Well, you just need to hit this one a little bit harder. I mean, don't, don't put too much thought into it. It's only rained for about five minutes, but it is definitely going to be slow going up this hill. We've been giving kudos to the USGA all day long. I will give a special one to the meteorologist who predicted some rain here this afternoon and actually got within one minute. It began raining of when that prediction came. Yep, just a little wet, Dad. I thought I hit it hard enough. So Corda with a chance to square the match. Nicely judged. She'll leave it above the hole, though. And still a little bit of territory to be navigated there. I'm going to say three feet worth, but Kang is away. Things just feeling a little nervy out there to me right now. Vicki? They are. I mean, things have slowed down a little bit because of the rain, the pace, having to have the umbrellas out and getting everything dry. But you can tell it's crunch time. Things, you know, when you started off the first 18, both players knew they had a lot of time on their hands and to be patient. But now each hole goes by. It's getting closer to the end, and, and they know it, and they feel it. And both of them on the green have missed some short putts, so all these are nothing to take a light of and need to concentrate and focus on their target. Danielle has done a great job this week of playing her own game and not worrying about others. That's an excellent two putt. Whoo, she goes, wow. 
to think maybe she thought she had pulled that out of the hole, but it just snuck in the left-hand corner. And now Corda Donna. Yeah, it's just a little straight in putt, but one that she has to take her time with, especially because she hasn't been that comfortable anything inside three feet. Well, it's longer than one she missed a couple of holes ago. Yes, it is. She's been taking some rehearsal swings off to the side, not to bother Danielle. Her father was trying to square up her shoulders a little bit. Donna, this is where your mental strength and thought process has to be strong and positive. You know, what I would do is I always would stare at the ball. Important to get this tee shot on the left center of the fairway because of the hole location. Danielle Kang next to play. Really important to keep your tempo the same when it starts raining. Oh, and did she lose that right? Tree in their way on this shot. It's only a 128 yard shot. So she has to keep this hit a low penetrating shot. She does and I don't know if hitting it that low if she's going to be able to stop it on this green. Certainly have an easier chance with a little extra wetness. And that comes up short in the front right bunker. She'd like to keep it a little short left of the hole. She hit it beyond the hole this morning and almost three putt from that position. There's that little backstop. Great shot by Jessica. She's one down through 26 holes, but a great chance to square the match of the 110th U.S. Women's Amateur Championship. Oh, what a shot. That's sweet. As she was this morning. This morning she had a putt about this length that she ran a good seven or eight feet by. This is speedy. This afternoon, a different story. Porta wins the ninth hole, the 27th hole of this championship match with a birdie three. And as you can see, all square heading to the back. And it's the three birdies and a bogey to Daniel's one birdie and a couple bogeys. So that first nine of this afternoon in Jessica's favor. And she knows that hole location's on the left side of the green. And that's a three wood. She is able to get that ball so far down there, it's almost level. And Kang has been at a disadvantage with her tee shot having a much longer distance. Good one by Danielle Kang. Be very advantageous to them. And now Kang really has to kind of regroup here. She had control of this match, had some opportunities early, let him go, and now it's all square. She's got 136 to this tucked hole location on the left side. Several times this afternoon, she's been in between clubs. This morning probably had better numbers than she's experiencing this afternoon. Might have been lucky that stayed up there. Finally got the right distance, but pushed it a little bit. Still hole high. Certainly the most animated conversation we've heard from those two. And Jessica Corda next, Donna. And 118 front, 28 to the hole. One thing Magnus Carlson, who is her golf instructor, said 
When she's down, she rises to the occasion. She has squared this match up. Peter says be right, and it is right. First match, and then my goals change throughout the week, and I think as you win a match, you gain more confidence and you get on a roll. And that's what both of these women have done. All right, Kang first from about 30 feet. Well, Mark, this putt is uphill all the way. Most important thing, again, is speed, making sure she gives it enough, especially with her opponent having a very close birdie opportunity. Should fall to her left. How about it? Wow. How about it? All of a sudden, Jessica Cordes. Must work on and make. The advantage to Donna now, if there is one having had Kang make that, is that, that four does her no good. And so she can hit this one a little bit firmer than she might have if she had to protect a par. Very good point. Don't have to worry about the comeback putt. Setup looked pretty good there. Wow, good that half. never had a chance of missing, did it, Don? Oh, that was wow. dead center. It was dead center. And that setup looked very square. The, the take back and through the putting stroke, very square. Take a look at this reaction now. That is one of determination. Mm. Well, and it's just fun. I mean, that's fun to make a birdie on top of your opponents making a birdie. That's what you live for. This, this is four iron. Rain coming down again. Trying to work that ball right to left. It's hanging out a little bit. Still on the putting surface, though. No surprise there that it came up. And just do not miss left. Stay. Stay. Oh, pretty aggressive shot there. Lands on the down slope. Sit. Just gets through the green, but looks like a pretty good lie. Greens. Not a bad effort. Just I agree with you, this is not a hard shot to hit. She had it online. Great fundamentals that they learn thanks to good coaching, good technique, watching the professionals, trying to copy what they do. It is amazing, Kay, when you do talk to these young ladies, or actually all the juniors nowadays, they do idolize a lot of players and, and, and try to emulate them. And I think uh, professionals need to remember on all aspects of their game that they are being watched. So <laughs> maybe try to do the right thing out there. I think the Golf Channel has played a big part in the last decade in, in making the juniors better players because they've shown them you know, so much golf all the time, a lot of instruction, and, and the kids get to see way more than they did when I was their age. And the golf is more exciting. There were, there were only three channels when you were a kid. <laughs> Cover you, you're going in. <laughs> Trying to think, the last three of these, <clears throat> Uribe won on the 36th hole. Blumenhurst, 34th or 5th. You have to buy it? Mm -mm. For you, Mark, we'll get you a discount. <laughs> if it's free, it's for me. <clears throat> I'm not going to the left. What'd you say? If it's free, it's for me. I like that. Through the one swale. So then you go to scores. Eight yards all the way to the hole, so. 
just laying up so she has a full shot into the screen. And that's a nice play down the right center. Kang will be first to play her third shot here at the par five. Yeah, it, we figured that Kang would be hitting first a majority of the time. So far, she's done a good job of applying pressure, hitting great iron shots in. Didn't like that. My goodness. Gosh, caught that heavy, Kay. Extremely. Oh, that's one of, one of the worst iron shots we've seen her make today. Good setup. She drives those legs aggressively, and she catches that heavy. Catches the turf before the ball. Could the 30 minutes of rain we had cause any bit of an issue there? Well, sometimes it, I actually think it's hard when the turf gets wet and you have a tight lie and you got that little half shot. I, I don't think it should have caused any problem with that full full shot. Well, a big opening now for Corda. She plays her third. Total 63 to that back right hole. She did not want to fly it past the hole. Big advantage right now with her opponent in trouble. Oh, oh, whoa. How about that? That should probably be a gimme birdie there. What a golf shot by Jessica Corda. A, a light switch has, has been flicked on in the last couple of hours. Head coach last night. She's on vacation with her family, but a few keys I asked her that would need to happen for Danielle to be successful. Put some pressure on early, mission accomplished. She said, would relish the underdog position. I mean, let's be honest, most people coming into this would say Jessica Corda was the favorite. She said that's going to drive her more than most people realize. And for 29 plus holes, uh, she's been up to the challenge. Not sure that's a good sign asking dad for a little instruction right before you're ready to hit the shot. I could make an argument she ought to concede the putt right now and yep. not show any weakness and just go to the next hole. Exactly. And and Vicky and Donna, I'm sure that you both have done that. I know I have. He's just hey, just don't let the person actually knock the putt in, let's say. And then, you, and then in this moment, she almost controls the issue. And I don't think she knows how close Jessica's ball is. She hasn't walked up to the green. By the time she got up as she was lining up her bunker play, uh, Jessica had already marked it. See, and she still, I don't think, sees the mark. I agree with you, Kay, though. I, I definitely think at this point she should uh, concede and if it, if not at least hit this and be done if it doesn't go in pick it up i was always a fast player and i like to clip along and move things along and just for the sake of moving along play and and not having to suffer anymore yourself well, that now was she Kang's will definitely fifth. concede. and finally yes tells jordan uh, jessica quarter that is to pick it up move on and with that birdie at the par 5 12th for the first time today Jessica Corda has the lead. Well, that's huge. She has fought through those putting issues. She was a little sloppy with a couple of iron shots this morning. 50 yards in some instances. She's birdied four of the last six, gone from two down to one up, and has all the momentum. She ripped that one. She is absolutely ripped it. We could, we could hear it. I think the echo of that impact reverberated through the trees. Long. Held that finish nicely. So a good tee shot. 81 yards to this back hole location. Probably wants to land it about 170 and let it scoot over that little ridge. 
Boy, she grips down on all those clubs, but that one gripped down almost to the downhill. Looked like right before she hit that, she did a little adjustment with her posture. She it's a good effort. Well, she does a good job of that. Pretty good for a while, but missed on the low side, so a pair of fours, and I would consider that an escape for Danielle King. She Thirty-one holes. Quarter for birdie. Yes, another one that squeezes in the left side. So a beautiful birdie three for Danielle Kang at the 14th. And she now squares the match right back where they started at 8 o'clock this morning. Knocked it into the far left-hand trap. She stayed way away from that today, this afternoon. Might have had some memories there. Yep. Not going to do that again. A little twirl of the club afterwards. And two well-placed tee shots. Location. Wants to land it just over that front edge would be perfect. Fascinating that we have two second generation 17 year olds. That one left off the start. A couple of feet remaining for her par. Again, a golden opportunity for Corda to win the hole and take a one-up advantage in the match. And now where her ball is sitting in a little low spot on the screen, going back uphill and then back downhill. And another situation, and Mark, you talked about it, you've talked about it all week, matching the line up to the speed and how important that is. She walks up and just shows the line where her father can help her line up her putter head. I like a player that is a spot putter and yeah. they look at the spot that goes through the line and they line up to that intermediate spot. And know that if they roll it over that spot, chances are it'll hit the hole. She thought she had it. She did. It looked good, didn't it? Yeah, it just it flattened was. out at the end. It started straight, was pulling to the left, and it never made that move back to the right. And I'm wondering whether Danielle saw that because she still has a little three-footer here and may think that it turns, Vicky. 
Yeah, Donna, it doesn't move much around this hole, and it is quite deceiving. Um, I looked at it, and we rolled some balls earlier, and it looks like it should go, and it doesn't. Relatively straight putt inside the hole. Hopefully she was paying attention to Cordas. nice when you can sit to the side of the green, your work is done, and, and watch as your opponent sort of stresses over a short one. Both players in with par, the 15th hold. Right side after watching your opponent. Great management yeah. right there. Just what you would expect. So the match all square, but Kang on the green. Watch that 60 degree wide open. That sounded pretty good. That was a nice little splash, but hard to get much spin. Again, short side. Uh, possibly eke a little to her left. It, it's sort of funny around this whole location, Vicky. It's a little hard to be certain what it does, it almost looks like it does different things from different sides. I agree, Kay. That's why it was so important for her to watch this as it was passing the hole. Well, if you're a little in doubt, keep it in the hole and hit it firmly. Lining that putter dead center. Beautiful putt. Sigh of relief there from Kang and she be careful that you know she's pretty pumped up. It is downwind. There is a slight backstop behind this whole location, but long is not what you want. She's staring it down. Oh my how about that? What a time to hit that shot. On. Oh, another good one. What an answer to terrific shot. Danielle Kang is the champion. She did it. She probably cannot believe it. What a long and grueling day it has been. At the end, a very deserved champion. Yes, it's been glorious this week. This club has been just magnificent. And it's my pleasure to present the Robert Cox Trophy to the 2010 U.S. Women's Amateur Champion, Danielle Kang. Thank you. Oh my God, it's heavy. <laughs> Danielle, you said a minute ago, gosh, what a stressful day, what a stressful week. You talked about all week, you weren't going to worry about your opponents, you were going to do your thing. Um, Early on in this match, how important was it to take that advantage and, and show Jessica you were here to play? Um, in the beginning, you know, I just did my own thing, and um, I talked to my coaches last night, and they told me, you know, to slow everything down, one tempo, and I did. Um, then we went to, you know, lunch break, came back, and just... I, I realized I was winning, so it really kind of got into my head. So um, I started worrying about her and, you know, started panicking a little bit. And when I gave her a few holes, um, my dad kept saying, you know, it's fine, it's fine. You have, when I was one down coming into six holes, he goes, you have six more holes. You could win four up with that. <laughs> so I, was, I started, you know, saying, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm not even thinking about her. I just worried about my game and, you know, here I am, so. <laughs> On that 30th hole when Jessica took her first lead of the day, how were you able to try to go back to what you had done all week? Um, well, 
you know, I laughed it off because I kind of hit the bad shots and gave the gave her the hole. But um, when they actually announced it, Jessica went up. I was kind of down, but um, I just you know told myself it's fine. You know, just because I'm worrying about her, I lost a few holes. So forget about her. I'm here to play, and I'm having a lot of fun. So keep it up. And you responded. You won the 14th, the 16th, and 17th. How did you do that? Um, you know, I just, my dad just told me to worry about my own score. And I made a few bogeys in the back, in the front nine today, so I was like, I wanted to make it even up. So, um, 17th hole, I have jinx on this hole. Every of my opponents uh, birdie it, but I said, you know what? Today is my time to birdie it. So, you have this beautiful trophy in your hands. What does it mean to be the champion? Um, it's awesome. <laughs> it's mine. So I get to put my name on the trophy, and it's great. And my mom gets to see it, and. Um, she couldn't come because she was so nervous to come. <laughs> and um, she said, just, you know what, no matter what happens, it's fine. But I'd like to see the trophy, so she gets to see it. And I get to share it with my brother, too. Well, congratulations Thank on a wonderful you. week. Thank you. Mark Danielle Kang, the champion, and on this day, the Queen of Charlotte. Indeed she is, Steve. Congratulations to the 17-year-old from Thousand Oaks, California. Heavy. <laughs> Birdie's her final two. Shot here, kept it underneath the hole. Back in the fairway, just had a wedge in. This is a classic doll draw screen with a little bit of a humpback, dome-like sh like shape, turtle back, whatever you prefer. So all of the breaks are in this hole. Tricky to read, difficult to see, and very subtle. <coughs> Steve Burkowski, I know all week long you have been saying that it wouldn't surprise you to see Danielle repeat in her quest for another title. Why? Well, you look at her, just 18 years of age, uh, three semesters of college, had success right out of the gate, earned All-America selections just after one semester in her freshman year. She plays with confidence and has the ability to back it up. So that'll be a nice, safe par for Danielle, and that is the way I expect to see her play the rest of the afternoon. She's going to force Jutanagarn to make some birdies to catch her. Well, that's exactly what she's going to have to do, uh, young Jutana Garn, the older of the two sisters, Maria and Aria, is caddying for her this week. She's bringing a lot of calmness and, and confidence to her. Maria. She's, um, she feels really good out there with her sister, both very accomplished players, obviously. And she'd like to turn the table here. She lost this whole you know, morning match. That came May 30 here, so this is a realistic opportunity. Yeah, I was going to say that, Val. Certainly uh, leaving it underneath the hole here is a, is a plus. You can be pretty firm with this one. It's not often you see a 17-year-old girl asking her 15-year-old sister for advice, is it? Too often. Good time to start right now. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Wonderful Same three four, at number three, three from Maria Jutanagar. And we'll leave this back. With her driver, only hit 10 out of 15 fairways on the front side. Well, I've seen that a lot. Um, you know, Kang is, is pretty flawless today. Hasn't been this many 15 out of 15. Has been missing at left. Only hit one big flare to the right. There's a little down drop down the fairway here at about 250. She may carry it. Bad bounce. Yeah, and she's had some wrist problems, uh, Val, and it caused a couple of issues yesterday. She hit one left on 13 and then out of bounds on 15, and her painkillers were kind of starting to wear off. So uh, we might have to watch that later on in this match. Last little bounce she got, though, and had the ball sitting up at the end. She's got a pretty good angle, so not as bad a position as she was in when she hit that big hook for 13 yesterday. Now again. She said that she was unable to turn to it on Saturday completely. Boy, I sure never saw that, but she's absolutely waxing it today. Oh, that was a super golf swing there, aggressive. So the afternoon session of the final match at the 100... It's just a little gap wedge. Only 91 yards <laughs> over a bunker. And spot on. He was just peppering the flag. Six degree wedge. And slid that right underneath it. That ball was on just a mini tuft of grass, and she got the tuft. 
little I'm bit sure of slice here, Val, in this putt, is there? There is. I think Dr. McNally is on the Christmas card list <laughs> for sure. Oh, yeah. A little bit of slice in there. Very touchy speed, so this is not a simple for the stretch. And I would think, Val, a, a big point in this match, uh, psychologically for Maria, if she could win this hole and get it back to three down, that would be huge. High enough, no. here early from about six feet to one in the, in the morning. Uh, the Tonga are now big opening for her. Most important putt of the day at this point. High enough, yes, barely creeps in. So 32 for Jutanagarn at the par 350, she moves back. Good boy, the wind up looks pretty definite to me. Both directions. Mm -hmm. And that was hit hard. That's right at it. All right, just go on. One time. Oh. 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 Shot. You shot. Comes up just short of the green in the primary well above the bunker. So. Lucky bounce. Yeah, it was a bit of good fortune there. Dan, you your address position. Yes, she does. She doesn't come up and out of it at all. And this had a chance to go in. Very nicely done. Danielle Kang, after the good fortunes with the tee shot, this her second. I always say it takes a little luck. There's only about eight feet room for her to bounce that through. And that was a fairly decent line. Just chopped down on it. She caught a piece of that, Steve. Yeah, just burned the right edge, so good effort there. A couple of short birdie putts upcoming. She uh, certainly did like it, didn't she, Jane? Thought she might even take the flag stick out herself a little bit more room but she played it very nicely well judged mark you asked me earlier of why am i not surprised she's in this position involved in uh, his daughter's game as say casey danielson's dad that we saw earlier on this week val yeah i think if there's a lot of that it happens well before they get to the golf course each day or maybe over dinner in the evenings but it's pretty laid back from what i can tell Pretty much the same line here. So birdie with three here at the six for Danielle Kent. She is once again four up in this championship match. Out of the seventh hole and she'll play in first, Val. She's looking at 196 yards. Really breeze her back. She's gonna she has four in there. Four locations on the ridge, back in the bush of the green. Just had a little juice going this morning, going straight down. Looking too far left, I get a bounce. And she did. Yeah, not a bad play there. That's where distance control is so important. Had that gone long and left. Professional golf. No, there wouldn't be any fighting in that. Group. That was a uh, four. Hybrid and uh, kind of upshot yeah. a little bit. Just hit it a little bit too high. But, you know, the big when I'm hearing from these two good players standing here with me, uh, that's getting this right over the ridge. This little case is just past it. So speed dominates. Nice roll, good direction, good display. 
all of them now. It's going to just wind up three, four, and four left. Not enough. The important thing is she got the right yeah. pace. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a really good platform where she was. here this morning. So this certainly at this point you have to have a good two shot and a good second. It's now for a birdie. And probably uh, a little second guess that club she hit in. Probably needed one more. Yeah, with all the rain that they've had early in the week here at Rhode Island Country Club, uh, a little bit of rain this morning. Not a whole lot of roll on the fairways. This is interesting. She has just slowed up a little bit in her routine right here. center cut. The way they mow these fairways, they go down one side and back on the other, and that's right in the middle. That's a much improved drive. She blew up well right this morning. And that was what she was looking for. This whole location well in the back portion of the green, up on a, perched up on a little ridge. You're making the hole play a little longer than its 415-yard published yard. Young Maria both of them are perhaps considering coming to the U.S. Uh, at some point, playing some college golf. It'll be interesting to see if they do do that. They're going to take some SAT books back with them back to Thailand. Um, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they do if uh, she decides, Maria decides to go that route. But certainly it wasn't for Danielle Kane. She really wanted to, to play golf and be a, a student athlete. Putts up here at the 27th tag, first to go. And she has to really pay attention here. Maria's in there really close. Super close, but close enough that you know, this is three putt range here. Just keeps trying to 
bundling past. Still a little bit left in that one. If you expect it to be flat, it's slower than it was. Well, it's flat when he gets up yeah. on that ridge, and that's, you know, the Don Gloss is, his greens are, <laughs> they're really good at fooling you when you change elevations. Yeah, and this one tends to run off just a little bit at the back. So that's definitely can confuse the players. So a great opportunity now for Maria. This for Birdie to win the hole. She lost this hole this morning with a bogey five. So good chance to pick one up here. And one last thought on her, Steve. When I was talking to her about playing Danielle today, she looked at me kind of wide-eyed and she goes, she's really good. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of parts of coming into this round that are going to be very educational for her going forward as well. You know, it's sort of been the, the refreshing response we've gotten uh, from her all week, a, a very healthy respect for her opponents saying just how good they are. See, it's outside the hole necessarily, but it is subtle. These are all important putts at this point in the round. Really can't afford to give any sort of glimmer of hope to Jutanaga. Problem. Well done there. The hole is Kang's four. After 27 holes, Kang is four up. Kang's <laughs> four up through 27 <laughs> holes as they head to the back nine. Oh, I do. Oh, okay. The location forward. It's a big green, but it has been difficult <coughs> for the players to hit for the most part. Oh, goodness me. It's even closer than it was this morning. That is brilliant. Below the feet bell, really important again. Keep her knees flexed and retain that all the way from the shot. A little bit too soft, just overcut it and undercut it. Things going from bad to worse for Chutanagar, and she will have to cut her our attempt well before Daniel King goes to the birdie. She has a little bit of right to left early on the putt. The biggest uh, obstacle in this putt is Daniela five feet away. Yeah. Her biggest obstacle is she has to make, she cannot afford to miss this putt. So if there's any such thing as they must make when you're five down, this is it. Gotta make it. She answers her. She just quietly. 
Yeah, she does it in one word or less. Well, she had to be aggressive with that one, without question, but still a little bit of golf left in that one. Yeah, she didn't need to be that aggressive. This would be a putt to go six up with seven holes to play. And it's really pretty, pretty level. It might just break a little both ways to get tipped to the right of the hole. See the rainfall just starting to begin again. Weather forecast for later in the afternoon here in Rhode Island is not good. So I would think Daniel King would like to get this thing over with as quickly as possible. And after a second look, I think maybe just right edge. Just about like that. Defending champion looking to walk Thank into the history books is oh. Anything back there will feed to it. Go. Oh. Sorry to do that here yesterday. Ball got up and just barely covered the front this time. Was in the bunker yesterday. the emotional player that Daniel King is, and I think a lot of times in the match play, you can afford to, to be a little bit more of a bounce back emotional player, and Daniel certainly has that quality to her game. It'll be interesting to see how that translates into constant stroke play as a professional. Mm -hmm. Very good effort there, grabbed a little piece of that left hand side of the cup. Good roll there by Tank, so likely to be conceded, far from the by Maria. Now, Tom Garn with an opportunity and holes running out. Val uh, really needs to go. Yeah, she's, um, like I said earlier, I do think there's an opportunity here for a huge learning curve for her and her sister. You know, has, has caught a glimpse of, of this stage this week as well. And kind of lost in the first round, got a chance to be out and see all these final matches and it's really been probably a great education for both of them and something that they'll cherish later in life to have done together. You strike me as the kind of individuals and golfers that will take something away from this seems to have pretty good family support, yeah. just the right uh, amount of balance between uh, golf and stuff away from it. So uh, maybe a couple weeks down the road they'll have that chance to sit back, reflect and continue to move forward. This now for Birdie to win. They are planning on going back to Thailand, Steve. Pretty much spending the next seven or eight months. They're coming back to America next spring. For more tournaments, don't leave it short now. She didn't. I think that would be conceded, perhaps. Perhaps not. No. Looking to the referee to get a read as to what she should do here. And she did finally concede it. That smile. <laughs> so the uh, 12th goal for the Columbus Championship match have in fours. So Danielle Kang will head to the 31st and 26th. I've actually been looking at her father to see if she should have conceded it. No, I'm not sure about that. Let's try to, her sister Aria trying to get her jazzed up. Well, it might be too little too late to get jazzed up. Well, she's talking to her. She's in her ear right here. Just, I don't know that language, but there's a lot being said. I would think, though, Val, that you know, this would be a good time for Maria to try and win a couple of holes, leave a little bit more on a positive note, and perhaps you know, just losing the next hole to a birdie or maybe a bogey or something like that. It is a difficult hole, but. Try and win a couple of holes on the way in here. Oh, yeah, no doubt. She's trying, Mark, she's trying, but you know, a lot of times you're playing against somebody that just their mission is so definite. You, you can just see the writing on the wall. I think the destiny there is pretty clear. On a top hole it is. Low, fairly straightforward, easy hole location in the front. Everyone's taking it down the right hand side for the most part all week if they've been where they wanted to be. And Danielle has done it again. 
just a machine off the tee today. There's no second guessing going on with her. You could walk down and place it any better. You're not going to touch it. She said just good. Happy her. In time. to dunk it, Mark. I mean, <laughs> she needs to take this hybrid right at it and hope it goes in. And she's missed it left. We catch a bunker. A little bit quick from the top. Transition is just getting quicker as the day's gone on, Jane. Yeah, just getting a little bit anxious. Just trying to force the issue a little too much. You're just trying to find anything to help you, any positive thought, any, you know, you're just getting beat up pretty good, and it's hard to maintain your focus, and now Danielle's 177 miles, this is fun. Probably just on six places. It's a good little bowl location. Yeah, anywhere in the center of the green. Right there, that worked just fine. That's beautiful. Tell you one thing, I gotta say about Maria. She has a great pair of hands. Terrific short game. She can whittle those wedges just better than a lot of players that play professionally. How about it? Oh, one oh. more turn. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it surprise me? That'll do it. Well, that was her 111th hole of the week in match play at the 111th U.S. Women's O Amateur, and she is the champion again. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Happy with where that is? Looks yeah. good. I'm happy and you're happy. Here with our champion, Danielle Kang and Martha Lang, the chair of the USGA Women's Committee. And what a wonderful week we had here at Rhode Island Country Club and a very deserving champion. We really did. We had a wonderful week and I can't say enough about the Rhode Island Country Club. A wonderful golf course and the people here have just been outstanding and we have an outstanding champion in Danielle that uh, we have a repeat champion and we're so proud to give her the trophy for one more year. Thanks Danielle. Thank you. Plenty of support here from the folks in Rhode Island. What a spectacular day of golf. Just how good was this golf you played today? You know, it was the best I've played all week, and I just making birdies after birdies, and, you know, I think I did it on the right day. So I've been saving it up, I guess. You've had some issues with the shoulder, the ribs, the hip. How hurt were you, and, and how much, if at all, did it affect your play this week? Um, it affected until a certain point, and it was hurting a lot at one point, but, you know, I got treated by Dr. McNally and yesterday I rested a, a lot and I'm feeling good as new today so I just went at it. This week is really a mental grind. Did you, did you expect to have such uh, physical issues to deal with as well? 
I was actually expecting it because I've been ex I've been having this pain for a while. So, but I'm okay right now. It's good. So, got the trophy. Well, speaking of that trophy, after winning it last year, you uh, told uh, a lot of people that you were going to put your name back on this trophy again this year. What was the most difficult part of that challenge? Keeping my promise to my mom. Um, she didn't get to say bye to it, so I said, Mom, don't worry about it. I'll just bring it back. <laughs> so I, just, I kept the promise, and she's crying right now and saying, thank you for keeping your promise. So. You talked about such great play today, your iron, your approach shots, uh, laser-like. Uh, I mean, have you ever had a ball striking week like this? Yeah, I'm usually really strong on ball striking, and I just wait for my putts to go in, and I've been hot with my putter for a bit now, so uh, I don't know. Everything just worked out well today. You set your sights on retaining this trophy for another year. How much pride do you take in the fact that you had such a lofty goal, and more importantly, you were able to achieve it? You know, it's a great accomplishment to win it two years in a row, and to have your name on there twice, and it's just amazing. What's next for you? Disneyland. After Disney, golf-wise? Um, I'm not sure yet, but I'm turning pro as of end of this, term, this tournament, yeah. So whatever happens, happens. Congratulations on Thank a wonderful you. week. We enjoyed watching you. Thank you. Danielle Kang, your champion, Mark.